Good morning and welcome to the City of Rapid City Planning Commission for April 6, 2017. If any member of the audience wishes to speak to an item on the agenda, there are speaker request forms at the table along the left wall. Please fill out the request with the agenda number of the item you wish to speak to and hand it to the staff seated on the left of the dais. At this time, we would also like to ask that if any member of the audience has a cell phone or other electronic device, that you please either turn it off or turn the ringer to silent. If you need to take a call, please step out to the hallway so the meeting is not disrupted. Items one through three have been placed on the consent calendar and may be approved as a group. Action will be taken on all consent items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration at this time. The findings of the planning commission are recommendations to the city council. The city council will make the final decision. Are there any items one through three staff would like removed? Any items one through three that any planning commission would like removed? And are there any items of one through three that any audience member would like removed? Seeing none, I'd look for a motion uh, on items one through three. Second. Karen made the motion and Commissioner Sullivan seconded that motion. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four. Karen is going to recuse herself from item number four. Good morning. This is an application to amend an existing tax increment district financing plan. The district is number 54 and it was created in 2005. This is an aerial photo from that time frame. And the district was created generally in this area. It's east of west of Haines and north of Mall Drive. Mall Drive is down here. Farther south. And this is a photo from uh, 2015. It shows the additional development that has occurred. There's been some here and then um, along Bunker Drive. This district was created to um, just a little bit of history on how a, an actual tax increment district works. The base value is established when the district is created. These tax increment, or these revenues always go to the taxing entities um, that we have in our uh, area. And then when construction occurs, there's a new base that's determined um, just based on um, the improvements that are done. And this area in here is the amount of the increment or the uh, tax revenue that goes toward paying for the public improvements. As of the end of 2016, the anticipated revenue for this particular district is $422,000. This was the base valuation in 2005 when the district was created. This is the year end valuation uh, at 2016. So that's uh, $28.1 million increase in taxable valuation. And here's some pictures of uh, the site. This is looking from Catherine uh, to the north northwest. This is one of the public improvements that was created. Um, originally, when the district was created, um, the city had thought that a, um, a well was going to be um, sufficient. But during the discussions and development of this plan, the city did request an amendment in 2008 to change the well to a tower that you see here. Here's another one of the improvements. Um, this plan also participated in funding portions of the Vicki Powers Park. We have a new booster station, and then of course you can see the water tower in the background. 
We also had um, installation of two water mains and bunker and then up to the tower. And here's our public improvements map. We did the reservoir, we did the booster station, some water mains to um, ensure some looping and then the water main and bunker drive here. And this is um, really what we're trying to do today. Here is the original project plan in this column. It's still valued at $5.1 million. We're making some revisions, and the revisions that we're doing today are only to um, uh, bring the estimated costs in line with what was actually expended. We're not doing any more new improvements. All of the improvements that were proposed with this ditch district have already been uh, completed, and now they're just going to um, certify so that the rest of the costs can be paid out. I know this is a uh, very busy chart, but this is the first um, loan that was paid off. This is the second loan for phase two, and this is now um, what we're working toward getting paid off. And we do anticipate that this um, district will be dissolved um, sometime in mid-2023. So we've paid this amount off. Nope, excuse me, that's wrong. We've paid this amount off, which was the first certification. There, was, there were additional costs that were paid off, and now we're looking at this plus some leftover interest. And everybody wants to know, you know, about how long does it take for our tax increment districts to pay off? State law allows for a 20-year time frame. Our average is 9.78 years. And then there's always a question on how many um, districts we still have outstanding. This was at the end of 2015, um, but today, at 2016, we are at 2.9%, 2.95%, and that includes all of the districts that have been approved to date. And uh, the reason that's important is because state law allows up to 10% of your total valuation to be included in a TIF. We're at less than 3%. And again, here's a picture of the existing development. And what I'm going to do is go back to the chart that shows what they're trying to do. So they're moving um, dollars around to accommodate these final numbers. But with that, we do, um, the Tax Increment District Committee did recommend approval of this amendment. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you, Patsy. Uh, I don't have any lights up, so I'll just I'll ask one. The, do you have kind of a quick and dirty summary of of where the the money's moving from and to? It seems like we got some great improvements out of this, but I'd just be curious. So the water main in Bunker Drive was uh, not quite forty thousand less than they anticipated. The water main extension. Um, up to the reservoir um, was a little more costly. That's up to three six hundred thousand. Um, so we've moved uh, two hundred eighty five thousand into that line item. The grading um, was removed. Uh, actually, excuse me. There were no changes to the grading, no changes to the park improvements, no changes to the booster station. The water well was removed totally. The reservoir um, was still at six hundred and seventy five thousand. There were some uh, increases in some of the professional services. And then the booster station was a little more costly. And then uh, the interest has decreased. So did that help? That's perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions from the commission? Look for a motion then, I think. Make a motion to approve. Commissioner Sullivan made the motion to approve. Do you want a second? Commissioner Schmidt seconds that motion. Any further discussion on the motion to approve on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item five. Item five is a final plan development 
to allow auto sales for a uh, new Rice Honda location. <clears throat> Property is located on southeast corner of East Mall Drive and Outfitter Road, uh, north of 98 Stone General Commercial District, in the planned development. Uh, currently, the property is void of any structural development. Uh, Discovery Dr Circle, Outfitter Road, and East Mall Drive are all being or there in place and will be proposed access from them. Uh, future land use shows the property is suitable for mixed-use commercial, and the East Mall Drive is turning into this sort of a commercial slash industrial corridor, and the proposed use fits into this area. Uh, East Mall Drive is also identified as a principal arterial street. Uh, here we have the proposed site plan. Uh, proposed building is approximately 58,800 square feet in size and is for showroom, service area, storage, and offices. Uh, Rice Honda sells and services ATVs, motorcycles, utility vehicles, scooters, snowmobiles, watercraft, and trailers. Uh, the applicant is requesting one exception to uh, waive the requirement to provide parking landscape islands. Uh, as you'll notice on their site plan their, or landscape plan, they're provi providing a rather robust landscaping along the perimeter of the property uh, to deal with, to provide that, that aesthetic appeal coming into the site, uh, the applicant has indicated that the uh, required landscape islands would uh, cause issues with circulation and snow removal. And because of the uh, uh, proposed landscape plan, staff is recommending that the exception to reduce the number of landscape islands from four to zero be granted. Uh, the, the applicant has also indicated that uh, at rally time, they will have a setup on the south side of the parking lot, and they are providing sufficient parking for the proposed use and still having this uh, uh, area reserved for uh, trucks and tents. Uh, they'll just have to get a temporary use permit uh, prior to those events uh, each year. Uh, proposed sign package, there are no uh, electronic reader message boards proposed. Uh, this didn't come out very well, but around the rear of the property is a proposed eight-foot uh, metal fence, uh, which is in compliance with the zoning ordinance. Uh, elevations of the building and signage on the building and uh, other elevation of the building. This is looking from East Mall Drive south into the property. The sign is posted on the property. Uh, you can see 90 here in the... To the south. Uh, this is looking along East Mall Drive to the west and to the east. Uh, this is looking at adjacent, here's the visitor center and uh, hotel to give you an idea uh, what's in the area. Uh, tractor Supply Company located across the street to the north and uh, other businesses in the area. And this is looking to the West at the uh, another hotel, Cabela's here in the rear, and uh, Sickies, a new restaurant. Uh, looking uh, south on Outfitter Road toward 90 again, and uh, from Outfitter Road looking towards East Mall Drive and that intersection, and then looking from Outfitter Road east across the uh, the site. Uh, this is a good project in a developing commercial corridor. The use fits with other uses uh, being developed in this area, and staff is recommending that the final plan development be approved with stipulations noted in the staff report. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Thanks, Fletcher. Um, not seeing any. I don't have any. <laughs> I think it's a good project. Excited for it. All right, Karen made the motion to approve with stipulation. Second. Uh, Kim seconded that motion. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
The motion carries. Item number six. Good morning. This is another application for a tax increment finance uh, district to create the district. This is an appeal from the tax increment committee. Um, they had a two to two vote to um, deny this motion. You've seen this application or a similar application on this property before. This is called the Village on Monroe. It's at Dilger and Monroe Street. Again, we have information on how a tax increment district works, except the graphic is gone. <laughs> Glad you guys saw that earlier. One thing to note with this particular district, because it is a residential district, um, the taxing amount is at an owner-occupied rate, and with a residential district, the difference in the revenue generated for this district um, that the school district would um, actually receive is made up by the residents, uh, the property owners within the entire school district. And that's about, uh, with this particular district, the amount that would be made, have to be made up every year is 5,200. So it's a very minimal amount that um, anyone would see on their tax bill. Well, there you go, and there's that little chart. We estimate the value of this uh, property, this entire district, to be $26,500, with the revenues to be at about $10,000 per year. One of the reasons why you guys are seeing this particular application on an appeal is our existing tax increment policy identifies that if the um, TIF committee denies the application, the applicant has the ability to appeal that decision to this body. If you guys um, decide that this is a worthy project and want us to move forward, then staff will create the project plan and bring it back to you for a public hearing as required by state law. So your decision today is just either to overpeal um, the TIF committee's decision or um, uphold it. So here are um, the existing uh, values from 2008. We have information back to 2008 in what the land and the structures were valued at. In this particular year, there was a fire on the um, structure that was on the property. And today, or at year end 2016, it was valued at 78,000. However, um, at the end of 2016, the structure was demolished. So the value of this particular um, lot is down to 26,000 because there's no structure. So that does show a 70% decrease in valuation. And so this is um, what the applicant is proposing. They have a total project cost of $662,000 and they are requesting TIF funds in the amount of $62,000 plus interest, which would be about $87,000. It's about 13.2% of the overall project cost. And uh, you've seen these photos, but this is the elevation looking from uh, Dilger to the south. And the site plan, there will be five um, workforce, affordable workforce housing units. Three of them will be two bedroom units and two of them will be one bedroom units. Here's a picture of the site looking um, to the southwest from Monroe Street. A picture from Dilger looking to the northeast and then looking from uh, Dilger along Monroe to the east. And here is the amortization schedule. If um, the district is approved, it would be um, generally probably approved the first of uh, June, maybe a little later depending on the time frame. Here is the uh, schedule that identifies that it would pay out um, within 10 years with the estimated revenue from um, the projections that were received with the application at about 10,000, a little more than 10,000 per year. And so again, because this is the critical piece is, you know, what is it gonna cost 
um, the taxing entities, and it would be the $10,000. However, this amount here um, will still be paid to the school district because it's a residential um, district, tax increment district, instead of a commercial. And so here are your options. Um, the first one is to overturn the TIF committee's denial and direct staff to prepare the project plan. You still have the opportunity to um, weigh in on, on the plan as a whole, or your option is to um, uphold the TIF committee's decision and deny the motion. The applicant does have the right to resubmit in 30 days um, if that's the case. But with that, do you have any questions? Thanks, Patsy. Questions, comments from the commission? Karen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, I want to explain why I recused myself from the first TIF that we talked about earlier and why I'm not recusing myself from this one. Um, I previously had been helping uh, the city with some tax increment uh, district plans and some items from that uh, perspective. Uh, currently, I'm not doing that anymore, so I'm no longer working with the city. So the first one, uh, I did have some input in, so I, I obviously recused myself from the, that one. This one I have not done anything with, so I'm not doing that with this one. Um, so on the item that we're talking about, uh, I think affordable housing and um, workable housing are both things that the city has been really working on to... to uh, Get in place and this is one item that will allow uh, homes to be uh, built and have some reasonable costs for the homeowner so I think this is a project that should go forward at least to see and make sure that that the public can see what's out there and give them a chance to um, go forward with this project so I think the appeal is is warranted and I think we should appeal that especially since it was a two to two vote at the committee and um, there was not a lot of discussion on on that um, the other thing is that uh, I, I think there's a qu couple questions and and maybe Patsy can answer some of those that did come up at the TIF committee and one of one of them is the cost and I don't know if we need to get into that. Maybe that's something we should get into when we actually, if we do approve the project plan. Um, the, the one question I will ask, though, is because this is a property and our uh, guidelines say that we aren't supposed to approve project plans with the property, did they go to the city council after this if we appeal this and agree with that appeal, or do, how does that work? Uh, this last Monday, council approved authorization of them moving forward with the land acquisition costs. Okay. Thank you, I didn't know that. Okay, that's all the comments I have at this moment, so. John? Come on. Um, what was some of the dialogue? I mean, why did they not come to agreement on approving it at the TIF committee? I think Steve's our rep, right? So <clears throat> maybe Patsy can share. There were only um, four individuals there and um, I think the school district was concerned about uh, the residential tax increment district, um, but he did not. He did not say. That's my opinion because he's. They didn't really have a lot of discussion, as Karen said. Uh, I got a speaker request form from Kent Haig. Good morning. I'm Kent Haig. Um, attorney at Whiting Hague and Hague Law Firm and not representing this matter or anything like that. I'm just basically here uh, as a private citizen. Um, one thing I have been or become keenly aware of is the, uh, over the past few years in working on a project uh, to address affordable housing, workforce housing uh, in this town is the abject need for it and also uh, how that fits into the landscape of the entire city and not only affecting its people but also uh, taking care of areas that truly meet the definition of blight statutorily and this is a block that uh, would be clearly improved an area a, a, a microcosm 
that would be truly improved while still offering uh, uh, or helping to offer a, a bit of relief or a bit of uh, help to the uh, affordable housing need. And because of that, I would strongly urge you to support it. Uh, it's, uh, the size of this TIF is very small. It's minimally intrusive. Uh, but it, I think it sends out a strong message that these small areas of blight are being uh, very uh, aggressively looked at and our, our uh, need for affordable housing is being very proactively looked at. And we're willing to do what we, got, we can do each little battle at a time to win the war. And I think this is a, this is a I'm very familiar with this project. Um, I'm familiar with uh, uh, not only the entities that are involved in it, um, but also the Marshall Goodman type homes that are uh, very nicely designed in my opinion. Uh, so I would urge you to support it. It's, it's, a, it's a minimal gesture, in my opinion, uh, for the city to make to promote these uh, worthy causes. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Karen. Thank you. I just had one other comment. This is also, uh, you could say this is an infill de development, which is something that is um, really something that, that tax increments are, are meant to do. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item to move forward with their tax income uh, request. Just to clarify the motion, and Patsy, correct us if we're wrong, what we're, we're overturning the TIF committee's denial and directing you to move forward to bring back a project plan. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay, and that's, that's your motion? That's motion. Okay. <laughs> I second it. Commissioner Sullivan seconds that motion. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I think we're up to discussion items, staff items, anything? All right, quiet meeting. Look for a motion to adjourn. All right. Karen made the motion, and Mike uh, seconded that motion to adjourn. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 aye.